Welcome, everybody. It's Monday night, around 10 days away from Passover, 10 days away from Pesach. And today we have a beautiful show for you. It's show number 183 in the Four Corners Project studio here in Beit Shemesh, Israel. Can you believe we've done so many shows? And some people still haven't seen any, but most of you have, especially if you're watching now. So, tonight's show is part two of Daniel in Babylon. Last show, I told you a little bit about how I wrote the musical, about how I got this inspiration after reading the story of Daniel. See? The book of Daniel. I read the book of Daniel, and boom, songs, they just came down like water. And... It's going to be 10 years. It's going to be the 10-year anniversary of Daniel in Babylon on May 31st that I wrote it, that I finished writing the first draft. Now, of course, since then, we developed it with a, couple, with a Broadway producer and then with the current director-choreographer. Her name is Kay Cole. She's an unbelievable person and, you know, theater person her whole life. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a theatrical live stream. That means we're going to be filming, we're going to be performing 10 shows. Not me, I'm not performing. <laughs> I'm just the writer. But the, um, there's, there's going to be 10 performances. Two of them will be filmed. And then after the 10 performances are over, we'll go into post-production, edit it together, and then upload it to a third-party film aggregator where the streaming sites then will take it and you will be able to watch it from the streaming sites, whether they be Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Direct Video, Video Direct Prime, Amazon Video Direct Prime. Um, I believe we've already got a deal with them. So, and of course we are still looking for investors, so you have to get in touch with me. And all these dates, hopefully we're gonna be releasing this by mid-November. Um, depends on us funding. So, all of you out there that know people that would want to be an angel, it's called an angel, uh, let me know and I will be in touch with them. Or they will be in touch with me. So, here we are. Last, when we last left Daniel, um, he already had been Bab in Babylon already 62 years. What happened was he got exiled in the year 3327. In 3338, Nebuchadnezzar destroys the Beit HaMikdash, the first temple, and takes all the vessels. He takes all the dishes and the vessels and all the, and he brings them to Babylon. Now, he finally dies, and 50 years later, on the throne is Belshazzar. Belshazzar calls him his grandfather. In other words, Belshazzar's grandfather was Nebuchadnezzar. And Belshazzar is an arrogant man. And he throws a party for 1,000 noblemen, and he takes out the dishes from the holy temple, from the Beit HaMikdash. Now, Daniel, at this point, is not in the picture. He's sitting at home somewhere, probably learning Torah, because that's what he did. He was the last member of the Anshei Knesset HaGdola, of the, of the men of the, um, oh, I don't know how to translate that, of the big assembly, right, the big assembly, Anshei Knesset HaGdola. And... By the way, the, the picture in back of me is the, is the artwork for this scene. Uh, the handwriting is on the wall. And there's, if I move away, you should be able to see. Right, there's the hand. And there's the hand and there are letters there and nobody could understand the letters. That's what happens. The party goes on. Belshazzar drinks a lot, so do all his noblemen. And then he sees a hand come down from heaven, and the hand writes Aramaic letters on the wall, and nobody can interpret those letters. And then the queen mother who's there, who's around, who must be very old, because she was around during the time of Nebuchadnezzar, she, she tells Belshazzar, hey, you know, there was a man, his name was Daniel, and he can interpret this. He can interpret the writings on the wall. So he, they bring him in, and he, this is what happens. He does, he says to Belshazzar, yes, I will tell you exactly what these words mean. And here, that's the song we're going to play now at the end of chapter 5 of the book of Daniel. It's called Mene Mene, because the words on the wall are Mene Mene to Kale Ufarsin. Right? What do they mean? Well, you'll find that in a minute.
You are Daniel from Judea. My father's father brought you here. You have wisdom and understanding. Dreams and visions you make clear. If you can read the writings on the wall and let us know just what they mean, you'll wear a purple robe and a golden chain. One third of my kingdom shall be yours. Then the chorus pipes in, or the noblemen, if you can read the writings on the wall and let him know just what it means. You'll wear a purple robe and a golden chain. One third of his kingdom shall be yours. Then Daniel responds. Give the gifts to someone else. I will tell the writings to the king. I will reveal just what it means. Every letter will be clear. You have sinned all your days. You were arrogant in every way. So a hand came down from God on high and sent you this message from above. And then the, the chorus comes in. You have sinned all your days. You were arrogant in every way. So a hand came down from God on high, sent you a message from above. The handwriting is on the wall. Many, many to kill the first scene. Your kingdom goes to Media and Persia. Many, many to kill if I've seen. How quickly can you learn Persian? These mystical words that appeared will make you shiver and make you fear. It's a message from God for you, and this is what it means. You've been judged by God above. He found you lacking and pulled the plug. Your kingdom's coming to an end. Do late to make amends. Many, many to kill if I've seen. Kingdom goes to Media and Persia. Many, many to Caliph are seen. How quickly can you learn Persian? Media and Persia too will be kingdom number two. No need to try and save your land, it's out of your hands. You've been judged by God above. He found you lacking and pulled the plug. Your kingdom's coming to an end. Too late to make amends. Many, many to Caliph are seen. Kingdom goes to Media and Persia. Many, many to Caliph are seen. How quickly can you learn Persian? The handwriting is on the wall. 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 turns into night. The prophecy was fulfilled, that's right. Belshazzar was killed and then his kingdom ended there. He was judged by God above. He was lacking God, pulled the plug. The kingdom gone and replaced by Darius the Mede. Many, many to Caliph are seen. The kingdom gone to Media and Persia. Many, many to Caliph are seen. How quickly can you learn Persian? Everybody. The handwriting is on the wall. Handwriting is on the wall. Handwriting is on the wall. All right. Mene Mene to Caliph Arsene, or the handwriting is on the wall. Song, one of four songs that I'm going to play for you as we finish the story of Daniel and Babylon, the musical. So... When I wrote that song, it was May 
May 19th, 2012, and I had one chapter left to write because even though there are 12 chapters in the book of Daniel, you know, um, chapters 7 through 12 are visions. And what happens is you can't really write about the visions. Number one is they're in Aramaic. Number two, you don't know what they mean because they're basically to be left for the end of days. And so we had one chapter to go, and it's the most exciting chapter out of those first six, if I may say so. And of course, what is it? It's the story of Daniel in the lion's den, of course. Now, most people are under the impression that Daniel in the lion, Daniel was 15 years old in the lion's den. That's what they think. No, no, no. Daniel was 15 when he gets exiled from Jerusalem to Babylon. It's 63 years later. He's anywhere from 78 to 80 years old. He could have been 15 to 18 when he's exiled. He's 78 to 81 in the lion's den. How does he get thrown in the lion's den? Well, it's a story in itself. Darius becomes the king, and Darius loves Daniel. Daniel is his right-hand man. He's the guy. As a matter of fact, Darius says, you're in charge, Daniel, and the other two grand viziers hate it. There are three grand viziers. Daniel is the first, and then there are two other grand viziers. And they plot, and they're going to throw, they're going to get Daniel ousted from his position. They want to take over. They want to be the ones in charge. They want to be the ones that Darius turns to. So they're jealous. And they, ha they hatch a plot. They go over to the king and they say, King, you're the greatest. Now, of course, I do this all in song. But I'm not going to play the songs for you. They say, King, you're so great. Why don't we make a law that nobody can pray for 30 days, except if they go through you? And the king Darius is a little confused. And he says, what do I need to do that for? And they say, well, you know, it shows your greatness. You know, you're the greatest. And Anyway, he finally admits, he finally agrees, and they pass a law. No praying to anybody except through the king. Now, Daniel, of course, hears this, and that's not going to fly. Daniel prays three times a day, and he prays where? Towards Jerusalem. We actually learn a lot of things in this musical. Number one, the saying, the handwriting is on the wall. That comes from this musical. So whenever you hear anybody says, well, the handwriting was on the wall, that's from Daniel. Second thing is, we learn to pray towards Jerusalem. Because remember, Daniel is the prototype of the person in exile. He's the man in exile. Anyway, so he's got to pray, and this is what he does. The decree is public. I'm forbidden to pray can't let that get in my way I'll just make sure that I face towards Jerusalem to ignore the edict might seem insane but this law goes against my grain I always pray three times a day towards Jerusalem towards Jerusalem the city of my dreams towards Jerusalem this exile I say how much love The windows open, what am I to say? Just another Babylon day. My job is here and I must thank God for everything. The windows open, I lift my eyes skyward to the heavens above. Just make sure that I face towards Jerusalem. Towards Jerusalem, the place I yearn for most. Towards Jerusalem, this exile has my heart aching. If I forget thee, Jerusalem, let my right hand fade away. If I forget thee, Jerusalem, my life is incomplete. A 
Swing the windows open wide. My soul pours out from inside. The center of the world is known as Jerusalem. From praying, I cannot refrain. Relieves the stress, keeps me sane. Get the compass and point me towards Jerusalem. Okay, towards Jerusalem. The second song that I was going to play to you, in the middle of, of course, the famous sixth chapter of Daniel, and we are heading towards the climax, where Daniel is about to get thrown in the lion's den. And how does that happen? Well, the two grand viziers were watching him pray, and they say, bring him to the king, and they bring him to the king, and they say, king, we have a law. Nobody's allowed to pray except through you. And Daniel was praying. And, and the king says, I'll give him a reprieve. And they say, no, you can't give him a reprieve. You have to throw him in the lion's den. And the king is devastated. The king loves Daniel. King Darius the Mede, as we call him, or from Media, loves Daniel. And so what happens is he says to Daniel, your God's going to have to save you. And at that point, Daniel gets thrown in the lion's den and he sings this song, the penalong of the musical. It means the next to the last song. And it's a it's a ballad, and it goes like this. In the lion's den, I am filled with peace. It should be over soon. And all relief. The decree is clear, I accept it with full devotion. In the lion's den, all is quiet still, and with firm resolve, I know my fate is sealed. There's no anger here, on you I'll rely with full devotion I feel your presence in the lion's den I know you are with me until the very end all that happens now must be for the good and the Daniel sings Shema like this Shema Yisrael, Hero Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, the Lord our God, Hashem Echad, the Lord is one, the Lord is one. God sent me an angel The lions are not moving tonight But wait God found in me merit I can see the light See the light mm. And Darius comes in Daniel, Daniel couldn't sleep at all what have I done to my dear friend did you make it through yes I made it through did your God save you yes he did did you make it through the lion's den mm. in the lion's den in the lion's den there is always hope there is always hope if you turn to God if you turn to God if you try to cope if you try to cope in the lion's den God did save me God did save me in the lion's den God did save us God did save us
in the lion's den. Yes. Beautiful ballad, duet, sung between King Darius the Mede and Daniel. And Daniel gets pulled out of the lion's den and he's saved. And King Darius realizes, he realizes that there is only one God and he runs the show. And at the end is the finale where King Darius sings one more song and then I will... Let's just see. Thank you, Bruce. Bruce says, The Lion's Den is the most outstanding song in the score. I actually agree, but there are so many great songs. I actually think there are 15 hit songs in this. I do, which is why it has to come out, and it will. God is pushing it forward. It's going to happen. You know, I'm the king of schlock. I've spent 36, 40 years playing schlock rock and parodies. But um, it's time for Daniel, and it's time for me to change course a little bit. So anyway, let's finish up with the song, The Living God, which is the finale. It's with the whole cast, but it starts off with King Darius the Mede. He pulls Daniel out, and he goes. The God of Daniel is a living God. He was, he is, and he will always be. He exists forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Miracles and wonders surround us daily. The sun, the moon, the stars, the sky, the sea. All his creatures all bear witness eternally. Daniel, go home to your people. Rebuild the temple as well. It's time for you to head home to Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Here we go. The God of Daniel is a living God. He was, he is, and he will always be. He exists forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Miracles and wonders surround us daily. By God in heavens and his earth, he sent an angel saving Daniel from the lion's den. Yes, Daniel did prosper in his kingdom and the kingdom of Cyrus as well until that time when he headed home to Jerusalem. Imagine this. Imagine this on a stage. Well, Bezrat Hashem, with God's help, it will be coming to a stage. And it's for the entire world. I received it. I always talk about writing it. I actually received it. It came so quickly. It was the craziest experience. I just kept getting song after song after song coming down from heaven. And I kept writing them down. Recording, writing, recording, writing, making some changes. It was the greatest experience ever. I haven't had a writing experience like that. I mean, I've had a, a bunch, actually. This is my third musical. But this was special. This was unbelievable. What happened to the other two musicals? The same thing that's happened with this so far, which is they have never been actually seen. Hopefully, you know, maybe they will be at some point. But right now, we got Daniel in Babylon. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Tomorrow night is Kumsitz Wednesday. We'll be doing the Kumsitz for you guys. Slow Hebrew songs. And then Thursday night, we're back with a pre-Pesach show. Show number 185. Tomorrow's going to be show 184. Everybody out there, if you want, if you have anybody that's interested in potentially investing in Daniel and Babylon, email me. You know how to get a hold of me. It's right there. Lenny at schlockrock.com. Lenny at Four Corners Project. 
www.thebible.org or danielinbabylonfilm at gmail.com Guys, keep on schlocking and we will see you tomorrow night with Kumsitz Wednesday on Lenny Solomon Live over and out.